ready to come. supporters blows his whistle George Moncur steps up and scores what a ball for them the goalkeeper was very close and it's John he lets in a low pass and a spin to and back on level terms come to James he shoots oh a goal from Tom James that was a volley and that was a it's a low cross it's an inviting cross and it's been turned in by Theo Archibald and he celebrates in front of the travelling faithful Some people have described it as the biggest game of football taking place in England today. It is first versus second in League Two and Richie Wellens O's are looking to continue their unbeaten start to the season and try and claim another three points against second place Barrow. And we are bringing every single second of the action straight to you here on Orient Live. And we are extremely excited to be in the studio today with Andrew Butler and Brendan Pitcher. And don't forget, if you're watching along live on YouTube, today's game is available to watch for UK and international fans. So head over to the website on screen now to pick up your streaming pass. Now, Andrew, as, as far as games go, this one is fairly exciting. It's exciting. I mean, I, I've always been um, this week thinking about the game, um, trying, to, trying to not get too ahead of ourselves because it's only the 10th game of the season. After this one, we'll have 36. Um, left remaining, but I mean, it's a, we're in such a great position um, as this season has progressed. Um, we've been brilliant so far this season, but as have Barrow. It's undoubtedly the biggest game of the season so far. Um, but even if we lose, and I know I shouldn't be saying anything of the sort, um, we'll still be top of the league um, come five o'clock. And of course, it is fairly early doors still, but as Andrew says, there is that gap at the top of the table still. How good would it be to extend that even further? Yeah, it's important. It's a, like Andrew says, it's a massive game. And if you can, there's already a gap there, there's four points. If you can make that, 
depending on what Stevenage do and other teams, Northampton around us, could be five or six points by the end of the day if we win this game. And that, that At this stage of the season, that would be absolutely massive. And I think it gives you that kind of cushion where you can afford mistakes further down the line. I think we saw in the 13-14 season where we had a similar start that we kind of we could afford those kind of mistakes where you can kind of drop off. And, and because you've had that such a good start, it, it sets you up for the rest of the season. I'm not sure how you feel, but I'm getting similar vibes to Harrogate away back in the National League season where it was first versus second, then both top of the table. And it's, it's got that big feel to the game despite the, the earliness of the season. Well, I think it's telling by the amount of people that have been talking about this game because I think um, whilst we've surprised some people, we haven't surprised uh, a load of people, whereas Barrow have really been the surprise package considering where they've come from, uh, not just in their history, but, but uh, compared to where they were um, last season. Um, they've been a real surprise package so um, it will be a thriller I'm really excited because also these teams are there by merit as well so they, they, they've been fantastic both both of these sides and uh, I think we should have a really really entertaining game of football on our hands well hopefully we do indeed and we need to head up to Barrow very quickly as we've got Luke Lambourne waiting pitchside with Richie Wellens ready to hear his pre-match thoughts live mm, you know. well Gaffer the scene's all set here at Barrow today and uh, looking forward to a good game yeah, it's an important game, first v second. Um, I know it's still really on in the season, but these are the type of the games that you want to win. But away from home, long trip, most important, we don't get beat. Um, we keep that gap from ourselves to Barrow. Um, when we come here perform, if we perform well, then we, we want to win the game. So um, we don't come away from what we've done for the, every single game this year, the basics. If we do the basics right, then we've got talent at the top end of the pitch that can win us a game. Team news today, we've seen there's a couple of changes. Yeah. One of them in force, I'd imagine, in shape of Tom James. Yeah, TJ pulled, we trained yesterday, but he's got a tight calf. Um, so we've had to pull him out. Jordan Brown, obviously. And this is why we experiment in this Papa John's, because Jordan's done really well in the in the Papa John's at right back. So it's a straight straight swap. So um, we, we're confident Jordan come and do a, go, do a good job. Good kid who's trained really well, deserves an opportunity. Good quality, and he's improving all the time. Chance for Theo back in the side as well at the expense of Ruel. Yeah, we just changed a little thing tactically today. Where where was I like opposite wingers, um, inverted wingers so for our full backs to go and give us a width and our wingers come in pockets. I think we can hurt these on the outside today. So just it gives us the option of playing Theo on the left, Paul Smith on the right, and if it's not working we can we can switch them over. Don't think Ruel's as comfortable on the right, he's an out and out left left player, so um that's the thinking behind that. Talk about Barrow away, you might think about more tough conditions, but the picture looks beautiful. I'm glad to be playing them now and not in December, November, because um, if I was to throw the ball up straight in two months' time, it'll end up 20 yards over there. So good time to play them, no excuses. We come here, all guns blazing, looking for the three points. Cheers, good luck today. A seemingly calm and confident Richie there, and we'll of course be joining him post match as well for his thoughts. So make sure you buy your streaming pass to join us for that one as well. And I think he's got good reason to be fairly calm and confident and I, I guess he's got a lot of trust and confidence in his players. Yeah, definitely. Look, this is an Orient team playing with a real swagger at the minute. We even saw on Tuesday in the Papa John's tro Trophy, we made a lot of changes, but we still played with the same kind of style and, and confidence. And, and that must be flowing through the club at the minute. I imagine the training ground's a really great place to be. And, and, and also, it's the case where we're missing probably our, our two first choice fullbacks today but you can be confident because there's, there's good options that come in and, and there's real competition for places in this squad. Tom James is the big one missing there in, in, in the first 11 really. Jordan Brown's coming in for him at right back but Richie was full of praise for him from his performance on Tuesday night against Sutton. Yeah it's an interesting one with, with, with Jordan because um, he, he really has had uh, very limited chances to, to get any starts since he uh, joined the club from Derby last season. But he's also never really let us down um, in, in so much as where he's played on the pitch, um, the performances he's put in as well. So it's interesting to, to see him being played at, uh, at right back, but it's obviously a place where he's comfortable. And also, you know, Richie Wellens has seen enough of him uh, in training that he's clearly thought, you know what, he's, he's the guy. What is the really big uh, issue is the fact that Tom James just isn't playing because I mean, we've spoken on the stream so much already this season about his ability, but he also got another brilliant goal against Sutton on Tuesday night. His, his ability is, is pretty much unmatched, I'd say, in, this, in the entire division. Um, whilst defensively, he's, he's, he's uh, been occasionally caught napping a little bit this, this season, what he can provide for the team uh, in an attacking sense um, it is, is incredible. So whether or not we'll see a bit of that from, from Jordan or whether or not he'll just, you know, do the solid defensive work because what's for sure is that Barrow will be will be causing us much more of a test than, than other teams so far this season. 
Well, Tom James is the noticeable absentee from today's starting lineup, but apart from that, it's a fairly unchanged and a strong starting 11 for the boys in red this afternoon. And let's take a quick run through the boys starting for the O's today. In goal is the ever reliable number 22, Lawrence Vigru. At centre back, number five, Dan Happy. Number seven, Little Paul Smith and 11, Theo Archibald are in the wide positions with number 12, Jordan Brown, replacing Tom James at right back. We've got that midfield three there, the number 14, George Monker, 15, Idris El Mazzouni and the captain, number 18, Darren Prattley. Number 19, Omar Beckles partners Dan Happy in the heart of defence. Number 23, Charlie Kelman leads the line and finally at left back, number 24, Jaden. Sweeney. And on the bench for the O's, Sam Sargent, Shadrach Oji, Craig Clay, Ruel Satiriu, the goal scorer of two goals on Tuesday night, Jaden Wareham, number 16, Aaron Drynan, and Zach Obiero. So there is the lineup in all of its glory, and hopefully these boys will be aiming to pick up another three points. And apart from that, that uh, obvious <laughs> absentee of Tom James, it is a fairly unchanged lineup, and th there's a lot of talent in there. Yeah, and I think the good thing about the lineup at the minute, apart from obviously the two fullbacks who have come in and are going to have to do a job there today, there's a lot of partnerships developing. It's a consistent lineup, and I think Omar Beckles and Dan Happy is a massive one. We're slightly concerned because Dan Happy did come off of injury last Saturday and didn't take part in the Papa John's, so you're a little bit concerned. But to see him back in there is a massive boost because I think the partnership that him and Omar Beckles um, have formed so far this season has been so important to what we've done in terms of they're so solid defensively but also in the way we kind of play out from the back in terms of Dan Happy is so comfortable on the ball it really helps with, with our progression up the pitch. We said it when Jaden Sweeney came in replacing Rob Hunt that it was easy for him maybe to, to come into a defence that is performing so well and just to slot in and, and, and have that continuity. He has slot in very well of course and now it's, it's time for for, for Brown to do that on the other side as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think Jordan Brown can, can certainly take um, a lot of encouragement from the fact that as a team, we, we've got the best defence in the entirety of the, the Football League. We've only conceded four goals this season. So um, outside of the Premier League, um, we're, we've got the best, the best um, goals against record. And that includes that incredible Preston team who've only conceded also four goals this season. And they drew their first um, six games nil nil, I believe. I'm looking at Brendan here because <laughs> he he's the one that always backs me up on this kind of thing. But he, but they, uh, we've got a very very solid defensive unit, right? So Jordan Brown's coming in, and Omar Beckles and, and and Dan Happy will be talking to him constantly. He's clearly trained as well a little bit there in training, and also you know with with um, Lawrence Vigaru, um behind him. You know we've we've been uh, pitch side enough to to see how much um, chat Lawrence gives all of his defenders. So I think he'll probably be um, a little bit coached through the game, um, certainly in the early spells. But it's, if you want to enter uh, into any back line, that's the one you want to. Do you think this could be one of the biggest or, or, or toughest challenges the defence have faced so far this season? What, what, what kind of... Uh, what kind of challenge do you think they'll be faced with from Barrow? Yeah, it's, it's going to be a different challenge. I think for me, apart from maybe Mansfield, this is our toughest test of the season so far. And I think Barrow are a side that I think they've got the lowest average possession in the league this season. So for a side that's, sec that's second, that shows that they're quite comfortable not having the ball. They're, they're comfortable at si soaking up the pressure, playing on the counter-attack. So it's a case of you're going to have to be on, on your toes. You're going to need pace in that back line and, and you're going to need to cover quickly when, when the moment comes. But it also means we're going to have a lot of the ball. And from a defensive point of view, that means your defenders are going to need to be comfortable on the ball, good on the ball and, and, and progressing it quickly because I imagine we're going to be looking at maybe 60 odd percent possession, which we're going to have to turn into into um, creating chances. And the midfield will obviously be key in that, and it feels like we're repeating ourselves every week. But that's the case when they're as consistent as they are with Monker, Prattley, and El Mazzuni in there. They are performing so well together, and it, it would be mental to change them. Yeah, totally. I mean, we saw last week um, uh, against Warsaw uh, that, that George Monker was was once again the, the game changer. Um, the early signs of him being at the club is that we're, we're, we're lucky to have a player with such incredible ability because whilst it was Beckles with a goal, it was, it was George Moncur who, who made it and created it. And it's, it's that type of player who we know is, is just that level up uh, of what we've had uh, in previous seasons, but also 
his ability will scare any any team. Any team coming into a game playing against us and they see George Moncur on the team sheet, we go, right, we're in for a tough test, not just in midfield, but, but pushing forward as well. So I'm pleased that he's, uh, he's kicked on. Um, we're you know, contributing with a couple of goals and now an assist. Um, but it's also, you know, Darren Prattley next to, uh, or alongside him, and Idris El Mazzouni as well. We don't talk about um, Idris that much um, since he's joined the club from, uh, from Ipswich, but he's, uh, he's been a revelation and, uh, and fair play, well done to the club for getting a player like him in on loan because he has been absolutely brilliant so far this season. He certainly has and he's just a cog in that midfield and, and as you were saying about the, the possession we'll have, Brendan, it, it will be key that our midfielders are able to break down this Barrow side and, and, and feed in our attackers. Yeah, I think Moncur is going to be absolutely key. We've seen in the last couple of games that he's been the difference. We, we've faced sides that have been pretty comfortable, like I imagine Barrow are going to be in terms of sitting in, letting us have a lot of the ball and, and, and hoping and, and saying, come and break us down. And, and we've seen with Orient sides in the past, when we trying to dominate the ball, it can ter- sometimes just turn quite blunt and you don't have anyone kind of to pick, play that killer pass. We've lacked that kind of player. George Moncur is exactly that kind of player. He can make something happen out of nothing. He's comfortable in tight spaces and that's what he's done in the last two games and that's why I think if we're going to be successful today, he's going to be absolutely vital. And we should give Idris El Mazzouni some loving. He's not quite the same with George Moncur in terms of what he does with the ball, but it's more his defensive work. That he- the league two play with the most tackles, Andrew, and he, he's just so important for this side. Impossible to play against as well. I would, I would personally absolutely hate playing against a player like Idris El Mazzouni because his tackling ability is uh, absolutely sensational. We're seeing on the screen um, some of his best bits. And, and it's kind of the, it's the unattractive um, side of the game that, that, that doesn't get enough credit because the way he wins the ball off, off players, he's obviously got you know, the most tackles, as you said, in league two. Um, but he's also played two games fewer than, than, than most others because uh, he came in on loan after two games of the season. It's actually the positions in which he, he wins some of the tackles, um, as we're seeing on the screen. High up the pitch um, and setting off the attacks, which, which is so, so vital. That was a brilliant tackle on, on Harry McCurdy, who, um, who I know some fans will say that he deserves a tackle or two from, from time to time. Um, but it's the way that, that Idris gets across the pitch, isn't willing to, to, to get himself hurt. And also, we'll see um, in a moment's time where he's winning the ball. And then, you know, that's so far up the pitch and then we're, we're pretty much in on goal. So he's, uh, he's been brilliant so far this season and, uh, and, and long may it continue. Um, something quite interesting about El Mazzuni I picked up from interviewing Martin Ling in midweek was him saying that he's not a natural number four. He's never really played as that defensive midfielder and that's why they had some reservations about signing him on loan. But Steve Foster, one of the scouts, was adamant that um, he could play in that defensive midfield role. He could be a number four and it's like he's slotted in and you wouldn't, you wouldn't know it. You'd be shocked to hear that um, considering how he's played this season. So, so impressive. I think Martin Ling even said he's probably better as a number eight and that's shown uh, perhaps in uh, later stages of the game where Richie kind of pushes him forward when, when we're winning and, and we might need a bit of extra now so, uh, up higher up the pitch in that number eight position. So really interesting that kind of this isn't his natural position but he's taken to it like a duck to water and he's been so so impressive this season and there's been some people around the club who have said if, if Ipswich didn't have the budget that they do he would probably be in the starting lineup of, of most League One sides but we're very lucky to have him I think it's fair to say yeah definitely a bit of a coup on our end I think there'll be some admiring glances from from other clubs maybe in League One but there's a recall clause we know in January but let's hope it doesn't come to that and I'm sure Martin Ling will be switching his phone off to anyone from Ipswich <laughs> on December time well, they do say not to fall in love with lone players, but there's, there's a couple in here that are performing well. And as, as we look to our attack as well, Charlie Cameron's leading the line again today. The goals haven't been coming as much as of late, but hopefully he can he can get back in amongst the goals. You've obviously got Wareham, who got two on Tuesday, and Drynan slowly coming back as well. That that striker spot is, is going to be one that everyone's competing for. Yeah, I mean, we, it feels like we repeat ourselves, but these are such good problems to have. The fact that Jaden Waring came in on Tuesday and, and scored two goals, not just on his debut, but within 15 minutes, was uh, was absolutely fantastic from him. But Charlie Kelman also, you know, we forget that he's got three goals, yeah, but he's also got two assists as well. So in, in terms of his overall contributions, he's got the most um, at the club so far this season. He's averaging um, a goal contribution um, every 74 minutes. So... He's, uh, he's in there for a reason. Um, I think that Wareham and Drynham will still have a, a tough, um, tough act to, 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 you know, to dislodge um, to, uh, Kelman. But 
um, as, as it stands. I mean, come on, we're, we're, we're scoring goals and we're playing very well. You just don't want to rock that boat too much. We obviously haven't seen too much from young Jaden, apart from his, his two goals in the Papa John's Trophy, but to have Ruel Sotiru, Aaron Dronan and Wareham on your bench and, and have that firepower should we need it, that's, that's some, some fairly good options to have. Yeah, and that's the thing as well, it, it's, it's options as well. They're not all players who just do the same thing. Um, they all operate in a slightly different way, but they're also incredible attacking threats that um, I think in previous seasons we would have been looking at our bench and thinking, mm, no, perhaps, like, no, no, let's, let's just keep them all out on there for, for all 90 minutes. Whereas with all of those three, no one can have any reservations about bringing any of them on. And the wide areas are key as well. And we see Theo Archibald return from injury and he looks back to his best, especially from what we saw on Tuesday night. And it was interesting what Richie said in the interview we saw earlier that Theo will be on the right, Smith will be on the left, but that's interchangeable. What, it's, again, two fantastic options to have. Yeah, it shows kind of the game-by-game -game basis Richie is, is taking into account the tactics and changing things up because I think from the majority of this season we've seen inverted wingers, haven't we, with, with Theo cutting in from the right and Paul Smith coming in from the left. Sounds like at least for the start today they're going to be changed and they're going to be on their more natural sides going, going outwards and that probably suggests that Richie's seen something in terms of how we can go on the outside and really attack those, those um, full-backs. And I think in the case of Theo Archibald, that's almost where I prefer him because I think he's at his best when he's just direct running past the player he can just skip past someone and his final ball is so so excellent I think we saw against Sutton he put in a number of really really good deliveries and he was quite unfortunate he only ends up getting one assist in that game and we said it about George Moncur but you, you mentioned how, how magic Little Smith is mm. he's exactly the kind of person and player what we need to, to, to produce a bit of magic to, to try and Create something today. Yeah, I think we saw in the in the reverse fixture, or not the yeah the reverse fixture last season where he, he scored and produced a moment of brilliance against against Barrow and I uh, wouldn't bet against him doing something similar today. He's, again, similar like George Wonka, really really good in tight spaces, can weave in and out, especially on the outside. He can get around the outside when when we don't really have kind of Tom James on that side. It, it will probably have Jordan Brown, who's probably going to be slightly more defensive. The onus is going to be more on Paul Smith to go out there and create something from the right and. I think He'll be happy with that responsibility. Well, the O's do have a tough task on their hands as we look to continue our unbeaten start to the season, and it is second place Barrow that stands in our way. So let's take a look at the lineup for the home side today. In goal for them, number one, Paul Farnham. Farman, sorry, their captain, number six, Niall Canavan. Number 10, Josh Gordon. Number 11, Josh Kay. For number 14, Harrison Nil. 15, Robbie Gotts. 16, Sam Foley. Number 20, Miles Wenlock. Number 21, Tyrrell Warren. Number 25, ex-Orient Loney. Centre-back, George Ray. Number 34, Ben Whitfield. And on the subs bench for Barrow this afternoon, Josh Lillish, Patrick Bruff, John Rooney, Tom White, David Moyo and Jordan Stevens. So, some, some talent in that lineup. Andrew, who, who worries you most in there? Um, well, uh, we, have, we have to say that you know, they've, they've had such an incredible start to the season and, um, and their team uh, has been so cohesive as well. So the eight of that 11 um, have started every single game so far this season, which is probably Barrow's greatest strength um, thus far this season. The fact that they can put out a consistent 11 is, is something that pretty much every manager um, at any level of football um, would appreciate but in terms of individual talent Josh Gordon and Ben Whitfield have been have been fantastic this season Whitfield's got the most assists in League 2 and Josh Gordon's got uh, is the second highest um, to, uh, the highest scorer uh, in the league as well so we need to really really be wary uh, of that threat because actually so far this season whilst we've come up against some good players I would say as a unit we probably haven't come up against the front line like their top uh, their front three and if you look at their defense that the name that jumps out is George Ray. He came into the club last season on loan at quite a tough time. I think it's fair to say we probably didn't see the best of him. But he's one that a lot of players in our side will, will know and maybe hoping to get into a little bit. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a big blow for Barrow that their, their centre-back Alfie um, McCalland is, is out away on international duty this weekend with the Northern Irish under 21s. So that's why George Ray is starting today. I think he's only made one previous appearance this season. So he might be a little bit rusty and, and hopefully we can pray on that because, like you said, we probably didn't see the best of him in an Orient shirt, but he, he wasn't the greatest player for us at the back end of last season. So I'm sure um, some of the Orient forwards would be someone like Paul Smith who, who trained up against him week in, week out, know his weaknesses and know where we can target him today. 
and it's their forward Josh Gordon that I think our defence will be worried about. How worried do you think we need to be, Brendan? Yeah, definitely. I think he's a he's an interesting player. He's someone that Pete Wilde has transformed in a way. I think he's a player that's always been known as a talent at the League Two level. I think he had a, a good. A, decent spell at Walsall. I remember him scoring a couple of goals against us in the Covid season but he was more of a in and out winger who would maybe get five, six goals. Pete Wilde's turned him almost into that natural number nine now and it's really paying dividends. He's got seven goals already this season. As we're seeing on the screen, some really nice finishes. He, he, he's a really pacey player. He's going to probably play on um, Dan Happy and Omar Beckles on that last man. When they play on the counter they're going to look to spring him early and, and play him in behind. And what do you think the defence has to do to keep him quiet? Then we, we, we've said about how they, they probably won't have much of the ball. So is it just a case of, of being alert for the, for the 90 minutes plus additional time? Yeah, you've got to be on your toes. I think the defensive line in terms of how we're going to play the offsides is going to be very important because Omar Beckles and Dan Happy are both very, very good players. But I think if it was a foot race between them and Josh Gordon, I think Josh Gordon's going to win it. So I think ultimately when you're going to play this kind of way where we're going to have the majority of the ball, Barrow are going to sit back and, let, and try and hit us on the counter. It's impo- imperative that we, we play the offside um, line correctly and, and try and catch them out that way, I think. No one really expected Barrow to, to be where they are in, in, in the table at this stage of the season, even despite how early it is. Do you feel the pressure's maybe off for them a little bit in today's game and it might be on, on the O's a little bit more? Well, I think potentially. I mean, I think what we have to appreciate is where both of these teams have come from um, in the last few months as well. Because remember, I mean, Brendan alluded to that, that reverse fixture here last season where Paul Smith pulled out a moment of magic. But, but Barrow were right down there as well uh, in the mire. You know, they were kind of feeding off troughs of slop and now we're both banqueting at the, uh, the, the, bank, uh, the, the gourmet table. And, and it's been brilliant to be such as have got such a great start to the season. And, uh, and now we should be excited to, to, to witness a really, really um, exciting game. Barrow have won all four of their games at home, but last season they had the 22nd worst um, form in, uh, in League Two too. So um, it's, it's obviously still very early in the season uh, and I think we have to bear that in mind. But the pressure perhaps may be off, off Barrow um, and more on us. And what would a win mean today for the O's, Brendan? Absolutely massive. It would be a real statement of intent to the rest of the league. I think if you could go five, six points clear at this stage of the season, it would be huge. And it would also, I think, be our best start to a season since three points for a win was introduced in 1982, which would be something to cover. Well, it doesn't get much bigger than that. This is the time to make history. Thank you, Brendan and Andrew. And it's now time to head up to Barrow and join our match conference team of Dave Victor and Matt Hiscock. Welcome to the far northwest where the sun is shining, the pitch is in ideal condition for a top of the table clash. And I must admit, Matt, at the start of this season, I wasn't expecting to say that this afternoon. No, 